Right, I'm here with Rich Love Day, the tank. He's going to give me his uh, predictions for fight night on the Nielsen promotions. He did one for me last time. I uh, got most of them right last time, apparently. Is that I right? Did. Yes. Okay. Right, are we going to go with this one then? Okay, obviously, this is a massive, massive show. I cannot wait. I wish I was a spectator, but um, I've been drafted into fight. But listen, you've got to get your tickets early. It's going to be a sellout. Um, 29th of March at the Oasis, the best fight venue in the area. Um, let's move on. So the big fight, the biggest one in history, in, well, the biggest white collar fight you're going to get, uh, Phil Day versus Sean Grant. Uh, I've had the pleasure of being in the ring with Sean. Obviously super fast, he's got skills, but he's fighting Phil Day, and that man is a different level. Um, respect to Sean for taking it, but Phil Day's going to win. You think that's a step too far for him? He's looking at it, he said that if he's obviously can get a result for him, he could look going pro, what do you think about that? He's right, I mean, it is, it's a massive step for him, but uh, Phil Day, I, I can't see it going any other way. Um, Phil Day win. Okay. Uh, next we've got the one I can't wait, um, and I really hope I can fight the winner of this one uh, this year. It's Phil Williams versus Niall Howard. Um, I mean, Phil's got skills, he can box. Niall's a big, big, powerful man. Uh, he's got no fear. Um, it's going to be close. I don't think no one's going to get knocked out in this one. Um, it's going to be who's down, who's going to be the busiest man. Um, it all sways to Phil, but um, I, I can't really call this one, to be honest with you. It's going to be a real close fight, and we'll watch it for that, that heavyweight belt. Obviously, I've heard like comments about they were saying if Niall's going to be fit enough, massive lad, um, try and use his weight, etc. Phil likely to try and use his uh, speed, moving around, etc. I mean, Phil, they mentioned it earlier, Phil is quite evasive. Uh, he, he, he can box and he trains in a real top gym. Niall trains in a top MMA gym. Uh, but I thought him, he, he was like 20 stone and he hits like a train. Um, I fought Phil when I was really unfit. Um, he just completely, you know, just jabbed my head off. But... Um, this one is going to be a close fight. It's going to be on the edge of your seat stuff, I think, this one. They're, they're both nice guys. I like them both. Um, so you think a 50-50? 50-50, this one, I think. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. Uh, let's go on to the, uh, the super middleweight bout with Paul Payne. He's now been matched up with Dan Boucher. Uh, that guy's got a lot of history, uh, ex-amateur boxer. He trains in a top gym. We all know Paul Payne. He's not been stopped. He's, not, he's won all his fights put in front of him at the moment. He's the, the champion. That's uh, I think you've got to support the home fighter for me, uh, Paul Payne win. So obviously he had an injury last time, uh, had to pull out of the fight. Do you think that, that obviously won't affect him? Or I, I don't think that'll affect him. I, I hear, I don't really, I've done anything with him. But he's, he's training in a, the battleground gym. He's a personal trainer, so he's always, he's always fit. Um, I mean, he hasn't had a fight for some time, but I don't think that Dan Bouch has had a fight for some time. So it's going to be quite an intriguing matchup. But I've got to go for a Paul Payne win on that one. Obviously, there's that talk about him, that massive fight that's down the line with him and Craig. Uh, obviously, what's your thoughts on that? I mean, that is a massive fight. I mean, this mm. this show cannot be topped. Uh, the only way it's going to be topped, possibly in the summer, when Mr. Nielsen uh, puts that lead beater pain fight on. A yeah. uh, huge, huge fight. We spoke about Phil Day, Sean Grant mm. being another step and another level. That, for me, is the same one. I think yeah. Craig Ledbeater is a step too much for Paul Payne. Okay, cool. Next one. Okay, so uh, if we go in on, the, uh, on this list, uh, next is um, Faz versus Alex Jordan. I've done a little bit of work with Faz. He's had one fight. Uh, he's looking good in the gym. Uh, I'm going to go for a Faz win on that one. Okay. Uh, next one we've got here is Jimmy Phillips versus Martin Hobbs. Martin doesn't train too much from what I gather. Jimmy's doing all sorts. He's even come to the gym where I go, the Scrappers Gym mm -hmm. at Hillmead. Come down there, seven nights a week, seven o'clock start. Um, Nice plug there, I think. Yeah, I'm going to go for a Jimmy Phillips, uh, Jimmy Phillips. win. Yeah. Okay. Then we've got um, a good friend of mine, Luke Robinson versus Carl Woodhams. Uh, Luke's now started to go to the gym. He's, he knows where it is now. Um, I'm, I'm going to support Luke all the way. Uh, he actually sparred a guy that's helped me out with training, and he said Luke's looking good. Uh, he's, he's hitting. I'm going to go for what Luke. What do you know Robinson. about, obviously, this other guy? I don't know nothing about him. Uh, Luke and Carl were old school friends, apparently. There's no bad blood there, which is brilliant to see. Yeah. Everyone's showing each other respect, which is that's what it's all about. But I'm going for a Luke Robinson convincing okay. win. Yeah, next um, then we've got uh, Roy Dow Thomas versus Luke Hambidge. Yeah. Big fight this one. Roy Dow's got amateur background. Hambidge is a, a local favourite. Um, it's going to be hard to call this. I mean, mm. Chopper's got a commitment to next week. Um, 
Just seen him, it looks a strong lad, Roy Dow. He's very deceptive, he's very heavily muscled. Um, I mean, so's Hambidge, he's a fit man. But this, for me, is going to be, uh, I'm, I'm 50-50 on this one, OK? Then we've got uh, a good friend of mine, Gary, Gary Venton versus Kieran Jennings. Uh, Gary, I'm actually helping him train for this one. I'm really enjoying uh, putting something back in there. Uh, training Gary's, Gary's training really hard, he's looking sharp, he's sparring people, he's out sparring lads that have had lots of fights. I'm going to go for a Gary Venton win on this one. Okay. Uh, then we go to Johnny Stokes versus Boz. Boz has been around for years. Um, Johnny Stokes has just come on the scene, not been stopped, he's a good tough fighter, but so is Boz. This one is potentially for me like fight of the night because they're both going to go out scrapping, they will throw for, for, for three rounds. Um, that's a tough one to call for me, but because I've known Boz for a long time, I'm supporting Boz on this one. Okay. Uh, next, we've got a um, good friend of mine, Gareth Domino versus Tony Cadder. Tony's got a big history. He's, he's boxed years ago. Uh, Gareth, he lives in Scrappers Gym, basically. He's there every single day. He's lost a bit of weight. He's got skills. They've both got amateur backgrounds. Um, but obviously, Gareth's a friend of mine. I want to support uh, Gareth Domino and go for a, a Gareth win. Okay. Uh, we've got a um, good fight this one, Gar uh, Gav Wilson yeah. versus Shabs. Shabs is a KO guy, we all know about KO, they mm -hmm. all train hard, yeah. but um, tough one. Gav fights an awful lot, I'm just going to say Gav could edge it on a points win, right. this one. Then we've got uh, your brother, Jamie Ashby versus uh, Dave Sanders. I spoke to them both earlier, both nice guys. Yeah. Always great to see guys coming on these shows for the first time. It's not all about the ex-amateurs, the ex-pros the seasoned white collars it's about the guys that come in for the first time it takes a lot of balls to do that respect them both for that that for me is going to be another great fight for the crowd to watch um, obviously Jamie being uh, you know your, your brother <laughs> I'm going to support Jamie he trains in the Scrappers gym got, always got to support Scrappers gym guys then we've got Troy Paul versus Kane a lot of talk about this one a lot of hype um, I like them both they're both good guys they're both training very hard as well your thoughts on obviously it was cancelled at one point and then back on again it was, yeah it's on and off was it a publicity stunt I don't know but it got people talking that's what it's all about I'm sure they're both going to sell lots of tickets um, that's another fight I can't call because that is going to be a good a good boxing match that one and a good scrap as well so 50-50 for me this one I reckon so there's quite a few 50-50s in there as well so it sounds like 50s. the only one that isn't going to be 50-50 is Rich Loveday versus the Anvil that is not going to be 50-50 that's going to be a Rich Loveday win that's it much appreciated for your time thanks very much thanks so much thank you